All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Grey Motor Build. Um, apologies that uh, it's been a while between drinks. Unfortunately, with Christmas and all, it's taken that little bit longer for Australia Post to deliver my parts, but I've got them all now. So is what I intend on doing in this episode is getting the crank. I'm gonna chuck it on uh, old Bessie over there in the background, uh, my lathe, and just give it a bit of a polish up. Just make it look nice and shiny. We're not grinding, we're not doing anything like that. We're just giving it a very light touch up just to clean it up because it's been sitting for such a long time. Um, so let's get to it. All right, guys, so here's a bit of a look at the parts. Um, now this crank is the, the one that has the spun bearing, which is really, it's, it's just no good. It needs to be binned really, or, you know, as you can see there, that spun bearing, it is just way too far gone cam isn't too bad and the actual pistons themselves they're pretty good but you know like i kept saying to my partner it's always good to have extras of everything so then day i've got a really good cam a really good crank as you can see just needs a bit of a polish up now this one is 10 thou over, so it's just had a bit of a touch up. Um, pistons, I'm not gonna use these pistons because they are an oversized piston. I'm gonna use the, the those piston heads with these con rods because they just seem to be a little bit better. And also I'm not sure if those con rods uh, are out of shape because of the spun bearing getting too hot, etc. So. But anyway, that's what the plan is. We're going to polish this one up on the, uh, I'm going to chuck it on the lathe and just run a bit of polish over it and just shine it up a little bit before I get to uh, put it back in the block. So let's get to well, it. Let's get the lathe set up so she can hold the crank and the cam. Let's get to it. All right, guys, she's all set up in the machine. So this is a before. All right, so what I'm gonna do, a bit of old wet and dry 400 grit paper and some WD-40 and just put it on there and just let it spin it up and just takes, just takes the crap off basically. Let's get to it. So as you can see, it's barely taken the surface off this bit of paper is uh, pretty well used. In real time, you saw how long that took. Just tidied it up, just the smallest amount. So let's get to it and do all of these and um, then I'll bring you back. do a little bit more on where the uh, rear main sits because it's still got a little bit of uh, marks on it. So this is where the rear main sits on this section so I just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Have a look at this. As you can 
so just just cleaning it up a bit not taking any material off not machining it not doing anything just cleaning it up very lightly just so the bearings have got something a bit more smooth to run on all right guys so as what i like to do as well is um just give it a polish up a little bit of clean rag and uh funnily enough a bit of uh, metal polish a bit of auto so it's got a bit of grit in it put a bit on and let it do its thing we'll turn this up a little bit faster have a look all right it just takes that a little bit more off just cleaning it up really shining it up bit of brake clean just so you can see it just cleans it up a little bit makes it nice all right i'll get cracking and do the rest of these and i'll get you back guys there you have it just cleaned up all ready to be put back in now let's do the camshaft Let's get you to have a look at this. Beautiful, nice and clean, ready to go. All right, let's get this thing out and um, start having a look at putting these back into the block. All right, guys, now that we've uh, cleaned up the cam and the crank, uh, I just want to clean up all these edges so we can start getting it ready to put back together. Alright guys, so with this rope seal, what I like to try and do is, um, obviously it's got to go in there, so I have made this which is basically the same as the crank size, which I just turned up on the lathe, which sort of just helps me beat it into submission I suppose. So basically get it into position as much as I possibly can, put this in there. Get my mallet and give it a belt. As you can see, it just squashes it down, okay, into position. Now, so once that's there, the hardest bit is cutting it. So, some advice. Go and get some new knife blades, a new cutter. These are extremely cheap. So, and basically, just 
give it a bit of a cut like that. All right, that's one sucker. Now you gotta remember, these little lugs fit over the top of that, okay? So when you're putting it in, you just gotta make sure these are nice out of the way. But you'll see when you, you'll see when you put the crank in position, okay? So let's put this one in the vise and we'll do the same thing. I'll bring you over and show you my other section of Here's my other one, just give it a bit of a bend up. Make it go in a bit easier. Try and push it in best you can. Now, same thing again. Position gently. around have a look that's quite nice still it's not all the way flat it's just got a nice little edge on it okay now same thing again okay Same thing again, just try and keep it flat as possible. all right guys let's get this ready to um put the bearings in and the crank has been ground 10th hour okay and the actual uh con rods are 20th hour just smear oh, i think it helps Make sure you push them in. Make sure the holes line up, which they should because they only go in one way, but let's make sure. <coughs> Loop. Give this crank quick wipe and drop it in. Let's get this baby in carefully. Try and line her up as good as you can. All right, look at that, beautiful. It's all looking good. Very carefully, just with that, um, I just like to tuck them. the seal just just little furry bits that are hanging off i just try and push them in as much as possible without touching the uh, the crank obviously just tuck them in these bits are nice and tucked in okay because you can see they get a bit fluffy after they've been cut and you want them to seat properly might even trim that one up it's a little bit hairy there a little bit of a film on the inside Press the bearing in, 
make sure you seat it down as neat as possible. Lube, make sure that's up. Now, what I do like to do with this as well is with the RTV. Okay, so I've got the lube. Now let's drop it on. Bolts, always start them by hand. Now it's just set in there, so let's see how she's spinning. All right. So it's not um, binding at all. It's good. All right, let's put these other ones in. Bit of lube. Again. More lube. Holden's facing that way. So where the little tab is, that's where the tab is, so they're both together. Again, get the holding facing the same way, so the tabs are together again. Drop that on. Okay, let's get the bolts. Bit of a wipe, put them in. All right. Again, I am just going to nip them up. Beautiful. That's running very nice. Let's torque these down. Main bearings are 60 foot pounds. I'm gonna do it in two stage. I'm gonna go 40, then 60. guys so it's all torqued down just so I know they're torqued down all right let's give this block a bit of a wipe down well this is pretty good actually this first set that I bought like this that's actually got a mark Top, middle, bottom. Not all rings have this, but if you can see it, they're actually standard and they got written top on them. Some of them have little dots in the top of them um, and they do have, it's very hard to see, but the little chamfered edge. This is the old one that was taken out. And this is a new one. So you can see the gap is definitely smaller between the two the last one that i did the gap the gap on the ones i took out was nearly five millimeters this one here is probably looking at two mil all right guys let's clean out these pistons and get them ready to drop in um so all we'll do is just a few basic things we have our brush which is nice and firm now and use a bit of diesel just to clean them up then we'll brake clean them a little bit take the old rings and that out in a sec right, that's one set 
there is a bit of crap in there. I'm not sure how good you can see that. But generally what you can do is get one of the old rings, okay? Snap it. And then um, just run around, just cleans out. This is the crap falling out there. Just cleans it where it's been sitting, all the carbon build up. All right, I'm just going to give this top bit of a light sand. Just clean up some of the carbon. Now I'm going to crack on with the others and uh, I'll be back. guys so this one here is uh does not want to come out so i'm gonna to have to just gently try and tap it out a couple of the others i need to tap but they didn't need much so i'll hopefully just tap this one all right let's move it yeah she's again just very lightly sure how good you can see that but she's pretty uh was pretty seized in there all right now this top one i think it's a little bit more so i'm putting the screwdriver central to the actual ring so i was not touching the sides of the piston so all right might have to put this one in the vise so guys that one that one is extremely seized in i managed to get it but yeah that's um not moved for a while not easy to get out but we done it without damage that's good that's what i like to see all right guys let's clean these pistons up with a bit of petrol you're probably wondering what i use the grit sandpaper was a, a wet and dry 400 um, so it just it just cleaned them up. It didn't take any surface off. It just cleaned them up. Um, not sure how good you can sort of see inside, but a couple of the rings were really seized in. Took a fair bit. Got a lot of carbon in there. So uh, one thing that keep an eye on when you're doing these, there's a little hole. I don't know if you can sort of see, tiny little pinhole right there. Now that pinhole, if you turn it around. Hopefully you can see it. See that little hole in the back there? That's what sprays oil onto the cam where your lifters go just to keep it loose. All right, guys, let's put some rings on. We'll put the bearings in, um, in the first piston. That's where I generally start, is on the bottom one. Put the bottom one on down the bottom first. Let's get this in, situated. Now we'll feed this one in carefully. Second. Now these are not marked in any way. All right. Now with these, got to make sure that the join 
this thing right and these rings turn freely because they sit on a little lip okay so if they don't spin freely they're not in the right position I don't know if you can see that I've come in close now I'm gonna just I'm not sure if you can see that see how it's spinning freely let's find the other one make sure they spin freely okay look for the join make sure that that's not overlapped so the joins right there that's where the join is right there it's not overlapped now with these you don't want to have the rings the join in the actual rings lining up with any of that so just offset them all so you got that one over here you've got the join here and let's put number three is over this one here which is here somewhere okay yeah Make sure they're sitting and it's turning nice and easily. All right. Number two. It's labelled. It says top on it. Hopefully you can see that. All right. Might make it a bit easier. Top. Basically just goes in there and just opens it up. Position. Okay, number two, last one again, look for the label, top, open it up, put it in, okay, make sure you offset your, your rings, okay, we've got one here, they do say not to put them in line with your gungeon, so just offset it sort of on the 45. This one here can go around the other way, like back to back, which is over here. So that's pretty much ready to rock and roll. All right, let's get the uh, rings and bearings in the other one. guys let's look at putting a piston in put that aside ring compressor all right get a bit of oil on this get some oil in there clean it was in a plastic bag ring compressor goes on now I'll just give it a bit of a spin just to make sure at least then you know that it's on once again Never have enough engine lube. Drop our new here at click in. Showed you earlier, there's a little hole in the con rod. Make sure that they line up. It's pretty hard to stuff it up because of your little locking pin here as you see but just make sure because i have seen it done all right a bit of lube all right now that little pin hole which I just showed you, goes on the cam side to squirt oil onto your cam and lifters. So, carefully. Very carefully drop that in. 
position. Crank is clean, let's knock it down. Okay. Bit of loop. Again, you'll hear it sort of click in. Spin the engine over. Now, Again, the little tabs, they go together. Always start the bolts by hand. I'm just gonna nip them up. Okay, gonna rotate. All right, that feels good. All right, guys, let's get these pistons in. Okay, number two, let's lube it up. Make sure the rings are offset, mate. So number two is ready to drop in. So make sure again, that little hole is on the correct side. Okay, holes that side. A bit of oil on here. Again, in. All right, guys, all the pistons are in. Didn't want to bore you with uh, too much repetition. So now is what we're going to do is torque down the Conrad bolts. Um, specs on that say 35 foot pound, which I'm set and ready to go. So let's get to it. All right, let's put the uh, locking bolts on. They've been talked down. All right, guys, I'm going to end the episode there. Hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.